Hello, this is Pete, your Service Psychic support guy. This video will go over the most important settings and features of being an administrator of Service Psychic that will get you up and going using Service Psychic quickly. As the administrator of the account, you will be given the rights to the company tab, except updating the billing and canceling the account. Only the owner of the account can do this. If you were to log in, not as an administrator, and click on the settings tab, you would only see the user tab and the referral tab. Logging back in as an administrator and clicking on the settings tab, let's take a look at the first setting, general settings. This link will allow you to do a couple things. It is where you can change and or update your company's address and phone number. This data is what will show up on your invoice and estimate templates. Next, you can adjust how many decimals you show on your invoices and screen. Next, skip down to the heading, Daily Schedule Report. This is where you tell the system when you want to send your crew their agenda. This report will show all work not completed today, and if you check the box below it, it will also send you tomorrow's work assignments that are not completed. And lastly, you can have the confirmation drop down whenever you drag and drop on the calendar. I highly recommend you do this. The other important function of an administrator is to manage the employees. To add and modify an employee, you will go to the settings tab. Click on the company tab. Next, click on manage employees. In the upper right hand of the screen, you will see new employee. Click on the link to add a new employee. Now, a quick run through of how to create a new employee. The name field is the first and last name of your employee. Tab down to the email address and put in his or her email address for corresponding. Click on the link, add address and contact information to add your employee's contact information. This information is optional. Next is the log on access radio buttons. If you have paid for the user to be one of your users, which can log into the system, then you wanna click yes. This will allow you to give him or her their username and password. Here's a note on usernames and passwords. The username is one word, and most of the time the user's first and last name together, or some combination. And a note on the password. When creating the initial password for your user, make it something very simple. Then, insist that your user change it to something more complex and private. This will not prevent you as the administrator from accessing their jobs, customers, or notes. It just prevents others from accessing your company's data unauthorized and keeps the integrity of your audit trail. Here you can also limit the amount of data your employee will see by clicking on limit access to job assignment and checking no. This will limit him to only jobs assigned to him. Next are the notification configurations. Here you have the email address that will be used for this user when his or her agenda goes out. The notification phone number will be the phone number that is text when you notify the tech of jobs. Remember, don't use any dashes or periods when typing in the phone number. Next, check off the different ways you will be notifying your tech. Most of the check boxes are self-explanatory, except for the last one. SMS is the format that phone companies use to deliver text messages to you via your smartphone. SMS a reminder one hour before tasks are due. This feature of ours will send your tech a text message one hour before his or her tasks are due. Lastly, is the employee type. No matter if this employee is going to log on or not, if you are going to assign jobs to this employee, then you want to check yes. Moving on to the permissions of each employee. Next to the names of each employee is the permissions link. As admin, you will be given all rights to add, modify, and delete customers, payments, and jobs. As admin, you will be given the right to run all reports and sync with QuickBooks automatically. Now, with all other employees, you will have to check each box in the permissions area to grant him or her the ability to do each one of those functions. If no boxes are checked, then your employee will only be allowed to view the data. Again, these permissions only apply to those employees you have given access to. Moving on. Once you are done with the employees, the next thing you're going to want to do is install your logo. Click on the company logo and browse to your logo in the format of .jpg 
also known as JPEG, or .png. These would be the best to use. If the logo is too big, then we provide a link to a third-party, free, picture resize website that works very well. Another function of the administrator will be to update your customizable fields. To keep track of where your customers are getting your numbers or email addresses to contact you, you should make sure you have the customer sources updated and customized for your business. How this works is when you are talking with a customer that has just called in for service is ask them how did they get your number and then you are going to check the drop down and choose your marketing source. This is key to knowing if your marketing dollars are working well or not. To help you organize the calendar, you should customize your job types and color code each type of job you can do. Color coding makes it easy to see what is going on for the day or the week. But even more, it will help you report types of jobs you are doing the most of and how much money each type is pulling in. We have reports that are very good at giving you that data. And one more of these links that I should mention to help you get started fast is the recent activity link. This is a key report for any administrator. This is basically an audit trail of all the transactions for your account. The other links I will go over in other series, but for now, that's all you need to get going as an administrator. It's that easy.